Hi everyone, uh, my name is Samantha Rumbizai Vajure. I'm an author and publisher at Canadian Heart Publishing. Um, and today I am here with uh, Scotty Elliott, who writes under the name CM Elliott. And we are going to be talking about everything books, so writing, publishing, and everything else that comes with. <laughs> Hi, Scotty, how are you? Lovely to be here. Samantha. Yeah, yeah, great. So let's get into it. Um, tell us a bit about yourself, Scotty. Who is Scotty Elliott? Well, Scotty Elliott's a, um, a person who spent most of her life um, in the bush mm -hmm. um, and marketing safari destinations, right. and marketing safaris. And then, of course, when I retired, I didn't know what to do with myself. So I started to write. Nice. <laughs> nice. So it's as simple as that, really, and put my experiences in my books mm -hmm. so they're all about the bush and um you know experiences i've had mm. and adventures i've had yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. amazing amazing okay so you have a new book coming out in 2023 part of the sibanda series um please talk me through the previous titles that you have mentioned you know the sibanda yep. series and without maybe going into too much detail explain what the new book will add to the series Okay, so there are three in the series so far, mm -hmm. Sibandra and the Night Adder, um, Sibandra and the Death's Head Moth, mm -hmm. and, si sorry, the first one is Sibandra and the Rain Bird, yes. then Sibandra and the Death's Head Moth, Sibandra and the Black Sparrow Hawk, and this one about to come out is Sibandra and the Night Adder. Mm -hmm. And what it adds to the story, well we have, we. The stories are based in Gugu, which is a little village on the edge of the national park. And it has the same characters. We have um, Detective Inspector Jabulani Sibanda mm -hmm. and his sidekick, Sergeant Uwe. And the third sidekick is an ancient and very truculent land rover called Miss Daisy that causes them endless trouble. Um, gets them stuck every which way, but somehow pulls through in the end. So there's a cast of characters as well in the police station. Mm -hmm. And so it, it develops them further. Um, Sibanda has a love interest. And um, so she follows through a little bit in the book. We learn more about that. And just um, a more crime and adventure in the area. Yeah, nice. Yeah, and I love that. I mean, I love your books. So I can't wait for, you know, um, the readers to get hold of the new book that's coming yeah, out. Number four. Yeah. Number four, yeah. Okay, so could you talk me through the process of putting together the new title? Um, perhaps giving details such as how long it took you to write the book, any challenges you experienced during the process of writing and trying to get the book published? Well, there are always challenges. Yeah. Um, <laughs> particularly in this day and age, writing is not easy. Um, some people seem to get to you know, write really easily, but um, for me it takes about two years I have an idea this time my idea was about Zimbabwe's diamonds mm -hmm. and so the night adder is a snake which has diamond markings on its back and so that detailed uh, fitted in sorry quite quite nicely dovetailed quite yeah. nicely um, and also it's quite a sort of mysterious title the night adder yeah know? so it yeah. adds a touch of mystery to it um, did it take a long time? I, it, once I have my characters, once I have my baddies and my villains and my suspects, yeah. then I'm away. Yeah. But um, sometimes it, it takes a while to get that all in place. I'm not a, I'm not a, a plotter, mm. sadly. Mm. I'm what's called a pantser. Yeah. I have a vague yeah. idea of what's going on. Yeah. And then, I, and then you just tell the story. I tell the story yeah. because it would get boring if I yeah. knew already. I, I like the excitement of discovering Absolutely. who did it, why yeah. they did it. I think I'm, I'm like that as well. I can't plot a story. No. You know, I just write. I sort of imagine being a maybe a grandmother by a fireside, just telling a story. You know, and it just kind of takes um, its own. Yeah, it just kind of takes its yeah. own life and. Yeah. And the characters quite often will lead you down there. Absolutely. So, yeah. So yeah. the book writes itself. It does. Yeah. Oh, nice. If we're lucky. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And I don't know. And with the publishing, do you did you find? Are you finding any? You know. Well, it, it, it's it getting been... yeah. It's getting more. I find publishing getting more difficult. Yeah. Um, 
the African fiction market in general mm. is is not good. Um, I was reading some statistics about the fact, I think it, about six years ago is the last time I saw the statistics, and um, locally published authors um, sold 75,000 books. Oh, wow. And I'm sure there were more than 75,000, 75 books published. Mm. So it, there isn't massive sales available for fiction. No. Non fiction sells very well. Yeah. Cookbooks, how to help yourself, or do it yourself, or yeah. those sort of books sell very, very well in yeah. South Africa yeah. and um, probably Zimbabwe as well. Yeah. But fiction, for some reason, we, we tend to. Very well. we, you're never a prophet in your own land. Mm. So we like to import the Lee Childs, yeah. the J.K. Rowling, you know, all the big names. Yeah. Yeah. We trust something from outside the country more rather than, than our own stories. Yeah, rather yeah. than our own stories. Oh, how sad is that, though? <laughs> How so? But that won't stop us, will it? No, we'll, no, that no. won't stop us. No. We will keep writing. Keep writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> um, so, I think we talked about the potentially having you read an excerpt from your book. Okay. Could you please read us a bit from the upcoming book? Okay. This is um. Oh, I've got to find it again now. This is a bit where um, Sibanda's on the run. Mm -hmm. He's been he's been accused of bad things which he hasn't done <clears throat> and he's being chased in the bush of course he's gone into the bush that's his his milieu his yeah. medium he knows everything so yeah. the choppers were close too close the pulsing drum of the blade screamed in Sibanda's ears when he dived into the bush curled into the smallest ball possible knowing his chance of evading detection was minimal he didn't know the shade was already occupied. His fellow fugitive, a snake, uncoiled and slithered across Sibanda's ankle. The detective lay motionless, willing himself not to move. He identified the reptile as the rhombic night adder. The demon night adder, a snake by any other name. Every instinct screamed to kick at the slithering viper, to get the hell out of that bush. But if inside lay horror, then outside lay certain death. He watched almost in fascination as the adder's slender cylindrical body undulated. The satiny texture of the scales reflected jade light filtering through the leaves. The sinuous movement was fluid and muscular a squeeze here, a relaxation there, and the diamonds on the adder's back sparkled in their rose gold setting like a treacherous anklet. A bite would be debilitating rather than fatal, causing dangerous tissue damage from the cytotoxic venom. But if Sibanda survived the helicopters, then he would need every muscle working and every ounce of energy he could muster. This fully grown meter long snake could damage his survival prospects. The adder hesitated midway across Sibanda's exposed ankle and stared with large, round, unblinking eyes. Sibanda held the gaze as still and steadily as the snake. The movement he couldn't control was the furious pounding of his heart and his pumping pulse points. The adder's sensitive scales would pick up on that. Can you see anything? The pilot yelled. I'm not sure, maybe. I'll let off a few bursts. That'll move whatever's there. The soldier clicked off the safety catch and engaged automatic mode. He sprayed the bushes. His partner on the opposite side followed his lead. The soldiers in the next helico helicopter, caught up in the excitement, did the same. The ground exploded in a hail of bullets, shredding all vegetation in their sights. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful, thank you, thank you. So, um, do you ever uh, experience the writer's block at all? Oh, yes. And if you do, oh, how yes. do you deal with it? You know, it's very difficult. There are all sorts of writer's blocks. If it's a simple writer's block, I, my best advice to anybody Who's, who's enjoying writing is just start a conversation, a dialogue, any dialogue, mm -hmm. and just 
even if he said go away or she just do it and it's mm. somehow you get moving and you get going all right so dialogue in the script in the manuscript yeah well it's, if it's got something to do with the manuscript it's yeah. very good yeah um, okay. i've also <laughs> done um prompts just drag prompts from nowhere and mm -hmm. the yellow pullover and or the red bicycle yeah and they have worked so well for me okay um, because you just say okay that will be that bit there and that mm. bit there and then somehow you manage to go back and and get yourself off it yeah but if it's serious um, I saw a piece of information the other day that just said sit down on your seat and put your laptop in front of you and write yeah <laughs> that's absolutely. the only way yeah and interestingly some people say put the manuscript away and let it breathe and then it will call you oh, back. I don't know whether that would work. It doesn't I don't work know. for me. No, no. no. I don't, well, I don't, I don't know if I've ever had a writer's block because um, I think what gets in the way for me usually is lack of time and tiredness. So if I'm working, for example, like my formal yeah. employment, yeah. Um, I might be too tired from work to write anything. And then it may be that I'm doing the publishing stuff, so I'm editing other people's work, I'm trying to get books out. I'm just I just don't have the time to then do my own stuff so I find that by the time I get back when I find the chance to write I'm gagging to write yeah. so I never really have a proper okay. writer's blog yeah um, I but used yeah. to be like that right <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the more I write the find that I, like, like, I've got two half novels at the minute yeah I'm both of them I, I'm trying with both of them I thought I leave that one and go to this one mm -hmm. but um, I'm battling with yeah. both but I would know yeah. I'll finish them because I, I've been here before and I've finished them before so yeah. yeah oh cool that's good um and i i mean i, I picked up that there are quite a few life lessons in your stories scotty and i just wondered whether your writing is intentionally didactic or whether you just write purely to entertain entertain to entertain yeah I, i'm unaware of trying to teach people lessons Anything. Yeah. yeah yeah um i can't think you know that i do that i mean it's experience yeah. it's entertainment it's adventure yeah um it's um, the bush which yeah. you know I yeah. want people to be know about and read yeah. about because there's a lot of information that sort of teaches you about the wildlife yes. and the bush yes. and all yes. that stuff so that's so yeah yeah maybe from that point of view yeah I'd like, absolutely you know. yeah okay no I, 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 I find the bits and pieces of information in your story is very very um, useful and interesting because it's not stuff that you often come across there's quite a lot of detail in, in your stories yes. and I love that about your work I think because I, the novels I read, I do enjoy reading novels that teach me something. I think, yeah. oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you know, or, yeah, you know. absolutely. And um, so, you know, we, we talked earlier today about uh, Chimamanda Adichie Agboche. Yeah. And um, when I picked up Half a Yellow Sun many years ago, I had a, a vague knowledge of... Um, Biafra, you know, yeah. I'd heard about it and joked with awful jokes like everybody did. Yeah. And then I read that book. Mm. I mean, that, that's, the, that's the sort of stuff I like. It's, yeah, absolutely. Same it's here. there, it's accurate, but it's, it's wrapped in fiction and it's wrapped in characters yeah, that, you can, that you can, can relate engage with, with and relate to. Because yes. you can relate to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then you learn a lot as well, absolutely. but you're also entertained. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's great. Um, do you have any advice for um, a female creative who might be doubting their craft? Do not doubt yourself. Um, if you can't do it, who can? Mm -hmm. That's your new motto. Mm -hmm. You know, it, people will put you down, or you mostly you're your own worst enemy most mm. of the time. I can't do this. Me, me, can I do yeah. this? Imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome, yeah. absolutely. But you can. Yeah. and you do and just keep saying to yourself if i can't do this who can mm. you know? no that's i think that's great advice yeah. thank you yeah um so are you currently reading uh, any books or watching anything interesting i'm reading glory by no violet bulawayo mm -hmm. which is very interesting um, at the minute, that's the one I've got open next to my bed. Mm -hmm. I'm also reading um, one by Richard Osman, The Thursday Murder Club, which right. is a, a very cosy, very sweet, um, yeah. and a set in an old age people's home. Yeah. So it's quite sweet. And, yeah. and, and so I don't like 
books with a lot of cruelty in them or yeah. a lot of tension. Mm. Um, I think I'm, I find that now. I loved it when I was younger, but yeah. now I'm, I don't like that so much. So that's yeah, what I'm reading at the minute. Yeah, and on I've been watching um, the amazing attorney Wu. Right. No, I don't, I don't watch. I don't watch TV actually, which oh, is it's, sad. It's on but... Netflix. All oh, right. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. And it's um, subtitles because it's South Korean. Right. But it's so special and so lovely. Um, I really enjoyed that. All oh, right. Nice. Nice. That's good. Um, I know we touched uh, earlier. We touched on you know the difficulties in publishing and stuff like that. But I was going to ask you what you thought about the reading culture in Africa, or maybe Zimbabwe. And what you think we can do to improve it Oof. <laughs> because it's linked to the publishing isn't it it's it is. linked to how the books sell so what do you think about the I, reading culture i think um the reading culture worldwide has taken a bit of a dip since the likes of streaming services have come online mm. so you can lie in bed with your laptop and watch something yeah which is deleterious even to me you mm. know i find i read less than i used to um so there's that in africa in particular um, I think, like everywhere, do you buy a book or do you buy butter? Mm. You know, it's expensive. Yeah. Even, you know, some of the cheaper books out there. Yeah. You know, you look at it, even I think, I think, oh, you know, can I afford to buy these books? Mm. Um, so I, I think it, it, we, it has become expensive. Mm. Publishing, as we know, is very expensive. Mm. So you can't cheapen the books, you know, otherwise no. you'd be doing it like as a, as a community gift. Um, I think we have a good education in Zimbabwe, or mm -hmm. we certainly we have. And I just hope that the schools are, you know, putting in the, the, the local writers. We yeah. need to promote our local. Absolutely, because, yeah, I know that most of us write because it's our passion. But, you know, I think it would be nice to make a little bit of money out of that as well, because, yeah. yeah. Wouldn't, it be, <laughs> wouldn't it be lovely if one of us suddenly got this sort of huge um, yeah. bestseller? Yeah. I mean? That would be lovely. That would be wonderful. <laughs> yes. Absolutely wonderful. But I, I think we're getting there. Yeah. I, yeah, I think we're get, we will get there. Yeah. And um, whatever happens, we, we won't stop writing, right? We just... No, yeah, no, yeah, we just have to keep going. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and do you have any favourite authors then? Ooh. <laughs> um, favourite authors? Well, loads. Off the top of my head, of course, like everybody, Jane Austen, I read again mm -hmm. and again. I love her. Um, there's another English author caught by the name of um, Pat Barker. Right. Who I enjoy her work. You know, her um, First World War trilogy I love. Um, I like, um, obviously, No Violet and Sissy Zimbarenga and people, you know, there are some locals that, you know, yeah. deserve to be in our, on our, next to our bed and on our reading pile. Absolutely. You know? yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. Um, moving on from, you know, writing, do you have other talents or other interests outside of <laughs> writing? <laughs> Well, the bush and wildlife obviously is, yeah. is an interest, and um, but no, not really at the minute. I haven't got anything passionate that I enjoy doing. Um, enjoy cooking. Yeah. Um, I enjoy reading, um, but mostly I enjoy writing. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. I think most writers just enjoy the writing. Yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to do anything else when you've got. <laughs> yeah. Need to get stuck in. Absolutely. So. Uh, do what is your biggest dream? Do you have a dream? Oh yes. Yeah. I would love Sibanda to be on screen. Oh wow. Yeah. And he it, the books have been um optioned by a, a South African um uh, film company. Yeah. And but as you know it's so long to get off the ground these projects to yeah. find the money and so on. But can you imagine when was the last time we saw a wildlife movie? Yeah. or the beauty of African scenery and yet Absolutely. we could do that you know the Sibanda books take us into the bush yeah we do. have encounters with lions elephants hippos you know everything you can imagine yeah I mean I think the last really good wildlife uh, movie was out of Africa maybe mm. I, I don't recall another one since and yet when I grew up 
I was absolutely fired up by all those yeah. wonderful movies. Yeah. The, the movies from the 50s, you know, and 60s yeah. of, um, of adventure in Africa. We just don't have those anymore. I they? know, I know. Well, I hope something happens. And, you know, you know, yes, got everything crossed for you. Yeah. Yeah, I hope that dream comes well, true. Well, it's a dream. It is a dream. <laughs> but dreams dream. do come true. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think I would love to watch uh, the Savanda series as well. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely would. Um, so, are we going to see more works from you? Like, now that uh, the latest one is done, I know you, you mentioned two half manuscripts. I've got, yes, two half manuscripts. One, but oddly enough, set in Australia, and one, I think, set it, and the other one set in England, and I have two other manuscripts out on submission at the minute that are um, both set in England. Yeah. Um, I will definitely not abandon Sibanda. He's too yeah. ingrained. Yeah. I, you know, there'll be another adventure. He's your baby. Yeah. So, <laughs> so and I love him to bits. Yeah. He's just gorgeous. And yeah. so, yeah, no, I'm, you know, there's so many down the line. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. And I can't wait. I can't wait to um, check them out. That's good. Um, well, okay, just maybe to wrap up, do you have a final message for your readership or your fans or anyone who's watching? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> Um, well, Sibanda and the Night Adder will be out um, early 2023. Please buy it and 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 put a review. That's I think what all of us want. Absolutely, is, as yes, we are so important. Is just if you can review it somewhere. Um, it helps authors so much. Um, that would be my that would be my wish. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Scotty. It's been really wonderful meeting you, chatting. We've been at it all day, haven't we? <laughs> So yeah, it's been absolutely a real pleasure meeting you and, and you. talking about all the things we've spoken about and um, I look forward to seeing you again. Me too. Yeah, great.